here I'm wearing a hat today we're gonna to be talking about basic signal flow so let's get into this what is signal flow we're gonna be following what's called the philosophy of small signal flow smallest signal chain whatever you want to call it the least amount of stuff so basically when you record something, it's got to go through a cable, and you could be running it down like a balanced connection, for example, the XLR cable. We talked about that in the last video. Well, or was it the video before that? It was one of those. And we talked about how the power that it has, because it's balanced, it will basically invert noise so you don't have any noise. But it's still analog, which means it's subject to small variances, nonlinearities. So it's it's going to be it's not always going to be perfect. So sometimes a little mo noise will creep in. So that's that will generate what's called a noise floor. This becomes very problematic later on. But basically, we run it through on, into, our, into our USB audio interface, and then it gets into our computer, right? We've done literally the minimal. We have done this. We've put as few things possible between our microphone and our multi-track, our digital audio workstation, uh, as possible. We, we do not want anything else in there. Why? Because the more, the longer it spins in this analog domain, the longer, or the longer it spins unrecorded, the longer you have a chance to degrade your signal, to lower its quality and resolution. Now, there's the, that's the gain staging is the main issue here, but the bad gear could also be an issue. So if you run it through, like, let's say you do something like this, you have, let's just pretend you have another mixer. And so you, run it from your microphone into your wire, right? So it's in your wire, it reaches your audio interface, and you convert it, and then you say, oh, I want to go through a mixer too. So you go into a mixer, and you decide to go through a channel in your mixer, and we're not going to talk about the gain staging of that channel. You just run it through there. You run it through a bus in your mixer, and then you run it through the, the two bus of your mixer. Then you run it back into your audio interface. Then you run it back into your digital audio workstation. And did you have a reason for doing this? No. But some people honestly do this. They wire things up and then you have an unnecessary signal chain. Sometimes it's out of convenience. So they'll have things wired so that they can run straight from their computer over to their mixer and then back to their computer. And they could, from their mixer, they can route to outboard gear and stuff and whatever, however they have it set up. So sometimes it's out of convenience. They are not following this philosophy. Now, the reason this philosophy is even a thing is ideally... If, uh, if you do this, you will maintain the highest signal integrity. So now that's, that's signal flow, signal chain. It's basically the amount of things your signal has to go, go through before it reaches its final destination. And you do not want that to be a long travel. You don't, want to, you don't want that to be a long path. You want it to be as short as possible for the highest level of, you know, of preservation. So... If you're using balanced connections, you're pretty much going to be fine. Like studio, professional studios are pretty much like, hey, look at this. And they try to do it as, uh, but if you talk to anyone, they're going to be trying to do it as short as possible too. They're like, yeah, I have a patch bay because I'm in this situation. I have it wired this way, but I, I will do this instead of that. Sometimes I'll have little hacks they'll use to make the signal chain as short as possible. So once you have that set up, the question now is, um, what components are in your signal chain and gain staging. So what is gain staging? Super, super, super important. Did I mention that it was super important? Like, yeah, it's that important. So gain staging. Whenever you enter a medium, there will be a threshold. Now, that sounds really fancy. So let's just put it into terms. Whenever you record a noise, there will be a threshold of noise. So there will be... So I'm recording my voice into this microphone. Well, when I do that, there is going to be a threshold of random electronic movement in this wire. That's your noise floor. And you can't get rid of it. You could try really hard to reduce it, but you just can't get rid of it. Because wires, as we talked about, balanced connections, oh, you polarity flip and it inverts it and gone. Nah, nah, nah. It's not that exact. It's analog. Analog is random. So... So there's going to be a level where your noise flare will appear. If you ever listen to a cassette tape and it's got that tss, that's ta tape hiss and stuff, that's a noise floor. So let's talk about how to avoid doing bad crap with this noise floor. It's called gain staging. So if I were to run my signal into this wire and then I ran it into my USB audio interface 
and on my USB audio interface, I configured it. We're going to talk about this in a sec so that it is very soft. It is not that loud, but I see signal coming to it. Then I come into my digital audio workstation. So, so when it's really soft, that's an important statement. When it's soft, that means that it is close to my noise floor. See, my noise floor is a floor. It doesn't move when I'm recording. It is, it is quiet. And then my signal, let's say it's like this loud when it could have been that loud. It could have been really far away from my noise floor, but I recorded it soft. Well, once I have it in my digital audio workstation, it did not just record my signal, it recorded the noise too. So if I turn up my noise, whoop, or if I turn up my signal, whoop, there goes my noise. My noise gets louder too. And then if you make your signal quieter, it just reaches a, another, now technically it reaches the digital noise floor, which is outrageously low. So you don't need to worry about that. But if you were working in the analog domain, if you were doing this in a mixer, well, guess what? An analog mixer has a noise floor. And so now you're adding more noise. And guess what happens? The noise sums. And now your noise gets louder and your signal doesn't. And so it's very bad. There's a whole thing about uncorrelated and correlated noise and trying to randomize it so that your signal, when you sum signals, your signal sums more than your noise does. See, it's this whole thing about analog that like it was, a, it's really a science. And in your digital audio workstation, you don't need to worry about that very much because your noise floor is stupidly low, so low, so not even an issue. That's why people render their masters out at like as low as negative 12. I've even heard some people go down at like negative 16 and you can bump it up because it's below the threshold of hearing the noise floor is it's that low. That's also why I think it's hilarious when people are freaking out about it there. Now, if you've re so if you record it low and turn it up here, bad deal. Now, this brings up the, the signal chain and gain staging if you run it through a bunch of different parts where you can turn the volume up and down you're setting yourself up for like disaster if you're not careful you want to make sure that your signal is as hot as it can be when it runs through each of these components and so because if it's not you could be turning up the noise and so when you record that means that you want to record as hot as you can on things that are supposed to be soft too because when you turn it down in the mix it's fine but if you ever want to turn it up you could have issues with noise so if you're recording like a maraca and you want your maraca to be really soft you should record it as loud as possible and then you give it you once you're in your station and it's been recorded then you can turn it down and send the musicians something that they can hear so they can do their performance for like tracking or whatever so if that makes sense so the, when the musician's playing you want the signal from the musician to be as hot as possible but the signal you're sending to the musician through their headphones will be at the, the proper level, the level that they want, because it's already been recorded. So now you can manipulate it. You can rest assured that your audio is being recorded with good gain staging. Now, if you were to run it through, now let's talk about our signal flow a little bit more. So the basic signal flow, we have our microphone, our wire, and then we have our USB audio interface. We followed the minimal signal chain because now it goes to our, our computer and it's recorded. So this though, this, this interface, let's talk about this. It has what's on it, what's called a preamp on it. So our microphone's spitting out a signal in the milliwatt range, like super tiny signal or millivolt range and super tiny signal. And that's an issue. So what we have to do is we have to turn it up so that we can hear it. Now, if you turn it up with a bad amplifier, it might have a crappy noise floor. So if you amplify a signal with a bad amplifier, you'll get a bad noise floor. It'll sound like junk. So you don't want that. So you need something with a good preamp. It's called a preamp because it amplifies it pre it does it before you hear it because you wouldn't be able to hear a signal that soft anyways so it's amplifying it and i'm not going to talk about preamps but preamps do sound very different because there's it's just the components the way they build them and on it i use the scarletti focus right preamps i think they sound excellent they're great you get a totally professional sound out of them there are other there are loads of preamps the neve preamps are pretty famous so that's, again, they're famous, though, because of how they deal with this issue of noise and stuff like that, because a preamp is an analog piece of gear. So we have it. We have our, let me see if you can see that well. We have our jack. It comes into our jack, whatever. Maybe you're using a balance connection. If you're using a line connection, make sure you've got a, you know, a line cable that has good shielding on it. And you have the, the volume. You have the... This knob, that allows you to control the volume. Now on these preamps, they don't really start working until you have it a fair way up, like way, much far over half. And then after that, they're very kind of sensitive, but they're also sensitive knobs, so it works out. They feel really good. There, there are other boards I've worked on 
where they they were like that too so it's not uncommon for preamps to have most of their gain in that last little bit of the knob turn so I don't know why that is. But anyways, you want that, as we just discussed, as loud as freaking possible without clipping. Because if you clip, you can't save that. That It's over if you clip. So you want, you want it as loud as possible without clipping. If you clip, again, it'll digital audio basics if you want to know about this. But it'll just chop your waveform off and then you're screwed. So you don't want that. So... Uh, yeah, now when clipping in digital is different than clipping in analog. That's another thing that a lot of people don't get. But once you have it in here, well, I better say it's just in case someone, because someone will probably give me an aggressive comment. It's because you're using 32 floating point bit depths if you're working with that. If you're working with fixed point, fixed point audio, it pretty much works the same way. But if you're working with floating point audio, it doesn't. Why? Well, you could do this. What if you turned on these channels, ran it into your master, and you clipped these channels you could fix the problem by turning down your master. So that should not be possible. Once it's clipped, you should be screwed. It's because it's using some floating point. And then also, if you were you if you're using fixed point, true fixed point, it should it will theoretically clip and stay clipped. Unless your mixer is doing stuff in the background, which it probably is, most mixers do. They will upsample and use much, much, much higher bit depths. So it looks like it's clipping here, but it's not actually clipping. And so, yeah, mixers, what's actually going on in your mixer, what you think is going on in your mixer is fine, is like not the same thing. But the volumes that are represented here are, are pretty much fine for mixing and everything else. I'm just saying from the technical engineering standpoint, there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. It's perfectly suitable for obviously like Pro Tools, for example, bang, there you have it. But if you talk to people, like the propeller head has a video on how they coded their mixer. We're well, not coded it, but... Uh, how they made their mixer to ha be capable of upsampling to such and such a level. And it's like, there you have it. And they even, I think it's the video on clipping where they're like, if you're clipping in your mixer, don't sweat it. That's literally, they say that. So you can go check out that video if you're super curious. I'm not going to put a link because first off, I'd have to find this spot in the video and put it there. And it's just like, if you're really interested, you go find that out for yourself. So now that I've covered my butt when, for people who like freak out over that kind of a statement, the old school people. So let's talk about, or new people who are totally ignorant and have listened to the old school people. But in analog, clipping's bad. Don't do clipping, okay? Analog has no such favors. So once you have it, you go in your preamp, that sounds really nice, and you send it to your computer and you're good to go. Now let's say that you are recording, you record it loud, then you send it to, uh, let's say you're staying analog, you're going into a, a console, You've recorded your signal loud, and then you send it into a, a channel strip on your mixer. Like, it looks like so here. Now, pretend this is an analog mixer, okay? So I turn down my channel. Well, I leave my channel where it's at. I turn my preamp. There'd be a little knob up here for my preamp. I turn that up, right? That's not good because now I am gaining up my noise floor. And so I once you've set this ratio here, you want to set it really nice because once you have it, you're done. You can't change it really. And I have also working with a new noise floor. I'm working with the noise floor that the Mackie has. Well, okay, I'm thinking of a Mackie 1604, but it, you could be any interface. You're working with the now the mixer's analog too. So now you've got another noise floor. So you've got the one you've recorded from your first piece of gear. And now you have this. Now, of course, if you're working with a mixer, you probably ran your signal straight into the mixer. So the mixer's noise floor is the one you're dealing with anyway. So you, you gain it and you want to be careful about not adding that extra signal. And then you say, oh, that's really loud. So what do you do? You turn it down here. And then you say, oh, okay, it sounds like a nice level now. And that's like super bad because what you just did is you took your signal and you lowered it closer to the noise floor. The noise floor is a floor. It doesn't move. It's in the actual wires. You can't, you can't change that. So you just did that. Then you're like, oh, but it sounds nice. Like I don't hear any noise or anything. So you're like, okay, cool beans. You route it, right? So you're like, now I need to get this signal to my master track on my mixer. So you route it to your, let's say this is the master track. Boom. And now you're like, and it's down by default. So you start turning it up and you're like, oh, that's, that's good. But I want to hear more of it. So what do you do? You turn the preamp up. You don't turn this up. You don't turn that up. You freaking turn the preamp up. What did you just do? You gained it up more. And now you're turning it down here, lowering it to the noise floor. And then you're gaining it up here again. This is just, this is just a disaster zone when it comes to this. This is what you should have done. You should have put this at unity. So at the zero value. So signal can pass freely through it. Gained it to its correct position. 
if you're running it in your console. If you've already gained it up, you shouldn't even touch it. You leave it. You leave that thing at zero. You don't. You don't touch that jazz. Some will employ a pad at the beginning, and there'll be a little Unity marking on the preamp, and so you'll have to move it to the Unity marking. Otherwise, you'll be turning down your signal without realizing it. So you need to look at the block diagram for your mixer as well. But anyways, you run it in here, you have the volume good, you have it good, and then it runs in. You reach your master, and you want that at Unity too because you're recording it. Once you've recorded it, then you can, then you have a separate place where you can mix it. And then you know you turn stuff down, make it the correct level, the way it should sound, but now you're free of having to worry about noise floor. Now if you stayed in the analog domain, you may analog, you still have to worry about noise floor. So you want to be really, really careful about analog stuff for those reasons. So analog is really, really, really cool because of its nonlinearities and stuff, but also you want to just watch out for things like that. So that's basic signal chain, basic signal flow. That's why you want a minimal amount to avoid all these extra gain stages. That's what gain staging is. And yeah, so the more gear you have, it's basically your signal chain, everything that it takes to get to your computer. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. I hope I explained it in a way that was grabbable. If you've never worked on a mixer, you may have been just confused out of your mind. In that case, I suggest, you know, you find a mixer and learn. I don't have a mixer here, but I have this. I use this. But when you're recording, that's just something that people don't get is the order you turn volume up in matters. So if your preamp's blazing hot and then you turn down something and turn it up again, you just undid your signal. You just, you just undid what you wanted to do. If your preamp's really low and you turn it up after, you're not doing things correctly in the first place. So, you know, you got to find a good balance, do it right. And that's how you get a good signal into your chain. Assuming that you got a good interface, you've got good microphones, you got a good performer, you got, because your performer is just as important in your signal chain. That's something that we should probably talk about. Your room, your room in your signal chain is important. The room you decide to record in will influence that it's part of your signal chain. That's what you're recording. Don't underestimate that. Your performer is part of your signal chain. And so there's something called the good rule, good performer, good microphone, good equipment, good, just good everything. There's like a list of, of good things. It's in Modern Recording Techniques, that book. He lists it a couple times, but it's like an everyone knows this rule. A bunch of good things will equal a good, a good result. If you don't have a bunch, if one bad thing, your result instantly is not good anymore. So you want to make sure it's good. If you have a bunch of okay things, it'd be an okay result, but more often than less, okay things when summed together will equal a bad thing. So you want to just, you know, those are the rules that signal chain. If you have any questions about this, let me know. If you're interested in really advanced signal routing, I'd have to go and find a studio and somehow work a deal out with them. So I'm probably not going to do videos on patch bays and stuff until I have enough money to afford stuff like that and like have reason for me to have it too because other than that i just go to a studio and learn that kind of stuff this is at home maybe you're at home you got to interface with a bunch of inputs for you're going to record some drums that's how you do it that's the gain staging that's how you should set it up of course assuming you've got the right mics for the right purposes and we're getting into our computer next up we're probably going to talk about the interface i have a little curriculum but i can't remember what the next video is so whatever that is if you have any questions let me know subscribe support me on patreon and have a blessed Day. How do you use limiters on individual channels? I'm going to sort of just spitball a number of concepts at you, assuming that you know what compression is and a number of other things. And then the other question was, what do you use for your stereo processing? So I'm going to try and answer these kind of fast. They will be answered later on in future series to come on. But the short answer to your first question is, you do not use limiters on individual